Hey everyone, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions from all around the world. Let's jump into it. Sergio from Azusa, California says, Hey DG, what's up? Hey Sergio, what's up to you? Uh, I've got a question that's been very puzzling. Do you think that heavier built and more muscular dinosaurs like T-Rex could use its neck to bite and strike like a snake and, and expand its jaws like an anaconda to swallow large chunks of meat and small prey. Sergio, um, you know, the smaller dinosaurs could because they don't have as much mass to carry. Tyrannosaurus rex is such a massive dinosaur that even though he's got pretty large neck muscles, they're not large enough to allow him to have the kind of striking capability of a snake. That is, it probably didn't use them that way. It probably ran in mouth wide open and would literally hit you like a train and uh, smash you and crush you with those jaws. But to stand back and strike is probably not realistic for the big guys. Now, raptors, uh, dinosaurs, uh, thin bone dinosaurs like Coelophysis, like Dromaeosaurus, uh, some of those guys, they probably did have a very quick, fast strike. But again, they're also eating very small prey. As for Tyrannosaurus being able to expand its jaws like an anaconda, now no dinosaur had the ability to actually unhinge its jaws. That is, at the back, they could not unhinge them and open their mouth considerably wide. Tyrannosaurus did have, and most other predatory dinosaurs, did have a natural break in the sides of the lower jaws that allowed the jaws to expand outward a little bit. So when it bit, it could expand its jaws a little bit to be able to take in bigger pieces of meat. But the jaws wouldn't come unhinged from the upper jaw and it didn't expand dramatically. So uh, the big guys know, maybe the little guys could have been very fast like a snake. Um, but not, not somebody as huge as Tyrannosaurus rex. All right, uh, Neiman from the Philippines. Is it true that Spinosaurus is much bigger than Giganotosaurus? Well, yeah, based on all of the information we have about Spinosaurus, it appears he is the longest predatory dinosaur and is indeed the tallest when you count the big sail on his back in, when you include that in the consideration of his height. Spinosaurus does appear to be bigger than Giganotosaurus and Tyrannosaurus. Uh, again, I consider him to be built completely different than Tyrannosaurus and even Giganotosaurus in that I don't think he was as powerful a predator, but he was certainly big. All right, Keenan from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Hey, DG. Hey, Keenan. He said, I know Tyrannosaurus could beat a Spinosaurus in a fight, but what would happen if it battled Giganotosaurus? That's kind of cool. Two questions about Spinosaurus and Giganotosaurus, one after the other. Uh, and Keenan says, thank you and stay safe, my friend. Keenan, thank you very much, buddy. And I hope you and your family and friends stay safe as well. Um, Tyrannosaurus, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Giganotosaurus and Spinosaurus, well, I just mentioned that I believe Giganotosaurus was heavier built and probably a little more robust dinosaur than Spinosaurus, even though Spinosaurus has an advantage of height and, and length. But I still believe that even a dinosaur like Giganotosaurus would have been capable had they lived at the same time and come in contact with each other, which they didn't, but um, for the sake of argument, in my opinion, I think Giganotosaurus would have been capable of uh, certainly beating the crud out of a, a Spinosaurus. All right, Lance from Boyceville, Wisconsin. Hey, DG, how are you? I'm doing great. Lance, how are you, my friend? What was the large claw used for on dinosaurs such as Baryonyx and Suchomimus? Thank you for your time. Well, first of all, Lance, you're welcome. It's my pleasure to answer these, and thank you for taking the time to write to us. Um, those big claws, you know, it's been theorized that they are hypothesized that they use those claws as fish-catching devices to be able to grab fish. It appears that Baryonyx, Suchomimus, Spinosaurus, and a dinosaur named Irritator all are very similar in build, and it appears that they were fish-eating dinosaurs. And if that's the case, then it would make sense that that claw was used for grabbing fish. Um, but we just don't know for certain. That's a pretty massive claw. You know, looking at it, it would have to be awfully big fish for it to use that to catch. It's certainly possible that that claw may have just been a defensive weapon or a, uh, an offensive weapon to attack bigger prey. Uh, just because your body is built to eat fish from our point of view doesn't necessarily mean that those dinosaurs paid attention to what we thought. They certainly may have been capable of hunting and catching other prey. Um, 
They may have preferred living in and around aquatic areas or areas that allowed them easy access to rivers, lakes, streams, and possibly the ocean, but uh, it doesn't mean that they were limited to that diet. So my guess is that if indeed they were um, pescivores, that is fish eaters, then they probably used that claw as a method to catch and hang on to prey. But if they weren't, I think they certainly could have used that claw to catch much bigger prey, including medium-sized dinosaurs. All right, finally, Kyle from Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Hey, DG, how are you? I'm doing great, Kyle. Good to hear from you. I want to know, how do you become a paleontologist? Because I would like to be a paleontologist just like you. Well, Kyle, that's very flattering, but let me, let me uh, explain something to everybody. Um, I hesitate calling myself a paleontologist. Now, paleontology is what I do for a living, um, at least something associated with paleontology. So I, I, I've oftentimes referred to myself as a paleontologist, but only in the terms of what I study and what I teach. To me, a true paleontologist is somebody that has completed high, uh, high school, uh, college courses, <clears throat> excuse me, and are degreed paleontologists. Um, I, I really feel uncomfortable taking anything away from individuals who have spent so much time and hard work in schools getting to be a paleontologist. Now, it doesn't mean that I think people that don't go to college are any less qualified. Um, a perfect example is, is uh, Dr. Jack Horner. Here's a guy who has done a tremendous amount for paleontology, yet he never went to college to get his degree. So. Um, Following my footsteps is the wrong way to go, in my opinion. I've been very fortunate because I am getting in front of millions of people uh, to teach about dinosaurs, and I had the opportunity to have a television show about them, and uh, it's what I do for a living. But if you don't go to college and you don't get your degree, it's not very likely that you're going to end up in the same place that I was lucky enough to end up in. It just so happened that I worked incredibly hard, incredibly long hours, and um, Therefore, it gave me the opportunity to be in paleontology without getting a degree. But I always tell everybody that's ever interested in being a paleontologist, the best thing to do, Kyle, is to find out if there's a school that you like. There's a lot of really good schools. Look into the various schools. Talk to a lot of the different professors at these schools. Ask them their opinion. Uh, heck, you can go online and find all kinds of paleontologists that, that uh, easily uh, reachable. You can contact them through email and even phone, for that matter. But um, to do what I do, I wouldn't suggest it because chances are unlikely that you'll get as far as I've been lucky enough to get. Um, but certainly, uh, go to college, my friend. Take all the courses in high school that you can. Uh, that's why the best time to talk to paleontologists about college is talking to them now before you get into college, and they can steer you in the proper direction. All right, everybody, if you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, fill out the form and submit it. We get a thousand questions a week. It's impossible to answer them all. So if you send a question and I don't answer it, please keep trying and I'll do my best to get to all of you at some point in time. All right, uh, for you young people out there, I always talk to you about practicing your reading, and this is why it's so important. Without good reading skills, you're not going to be that successful in anything you do. No matter what it is you choose to do, being able to read is incredibly important because the first thing you're going to do when you apply for a job is fill out an application. And if you can't read it and if you don't understand what they're asking, you're never going to get a job. So that's why I, I challenge you to be a good reader and practice, and it, it's good for you. And also, you can learn so much more about dinosaurs by reading a variety of different books. And lastly, everybody, I always encourage you to use good manners, and there's a reason for that too, and that is that it certainly makes the world a whole lot, a lot better place, and uh, it makes the day a lot better when you're happy rather than being grumpy. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care, everybody.